This module talks about the testing of normality assumption using a software. In this module, we'll use the real data set to test for the normality assumption using descriptive method as well as inferential method. Let's take an example. Nakamura et al. studied subjects with medical collateral ligament and interior cruciate ligament tears between Feb 1995 and December 1997. Second, 17 consecutive patients with combined acute ACL and grade 3 MCL injuries were treated by the same physician at the research center. One of the variables of interest was the length of time in days between the occurrence of the injury and the first magnetic resonance imaging, that is MRI. So in table 7.2.1, we got the data for the number of days until MRI for subject with MCL and ACL tears. First column, that is of subject, that shows us the count from 1 to 17, which shows that there are 17 subjects. Second is our variable of interest, that is days. The number of days until MRI for subjects with MCL and ACL tears. We want to test whether the distribution for the number of days is normal or not. And more specifically, we want to test for the normality assumption that if this sample belongs to a population that follows the normal probability distribution. To test normality assumption, we will use SPSS. For this continuous variable, that is time, that is measured in days, we have to test for the normality assumption, we have entered this variable into our SPSS data view, whereas the variable view with this variable name that stays, it's a numeric variable with no decimal places, and the label says that this is the number of days until MRI. Measure says scale, which shows that it's a quantitative variable. So, firstly, performing descriptive statistical analysis, we can go to Analyze, descriptive stats, and explore. Explore command will help us to perform descriptive, whether it's graphical or numerical methods, and inferential methods altogether to test for the normality assumption in SPS. The dependent variable will be number of days until MRI. We want to display both the statistics and plots, so we'll click here. If, want, if we want to only see plots, we'll click on the plots. And if you are interested in only the statistics, that's the numerical method, we'll click on statistics. To draw a histogram, we gotta go to plots and click on histogram. And more importantly, since we want to have the normal quantile quantile plot along with the Shapiro Wilkes test, we'll check this dialog box and press continue. Keeping all other options as the default, we press OK. We got to keep it in mind that we are performing the test at 5% level of significance here. The very first thing we get as an output is a case processing summary, which says that for the variable number of days until MRI, we got 17 values, which is 100%. So there's none missing. So total valid values are 17, which makes 100%. Let's firstly look at the graphical method. In graphical method, the very first method is histogram. This histogram doesn't really show a pretty nice symmetric picture. So we can get a hint that it may not be symmetric distribution. And we are sure that if it's not symmetric, then it's very likely that it won't be normal. But certainly from histogram, we can get a good guess. And we can conclude that the distribution is not symmetric. We can also look at the stem and leaf plot. Here, stem and leaf plot also shows that the distribution is not symmetric. If it had been symmetric, it would show a very perfect symmetry here, a bell shaped curve here. So, looking at the box and whisker plot, we can notice that Q2 is closer to Q1, which also a hint that the data is asymmetric. And for asymmetric data, it's very likely that it's not going to be normal. Let's look at the normal quantile quantile plot. Here, the normal quantile quantile plot, which is a relatively superior method to the histogram, stem and leaf, and a box and whisker plot, it shows that, that most of the dots fall pretty close to 
this diagonal line. And especially we can see at the tails. There are no heavier tail, there are no thick, there are no thin tails. It's not very uh, strongly positively skewed or not very strongly negatively skewed. So it's very likely that it may be normal. But one thing is important to note here that all these measures are descriptive statistical measures. They give a very strong indication that what the population may look like, but they only talk about what the sample characteristics carry. Then we look for the numerical method. In numerical methods, we can notice that mean is 13.29, median is 12.00. So if mean and median are equal, the data will be symmetric, but right now mean is larger than median, so it's very likely the data is positively skewed. We can also look at the coefficient of skewness, which is 0 0.224. And in SPSS, coefficient of skewness and coefficient of, kurtos and of kurtosis are compared at zero. If coefficient of skewness is equals to zero, we say the distribution is symmetric. And if the value is positive for the coefficient of skewness, we say the distribution is positively skewed. And if this value is negative, we say the distribution is negatively skewed. And likewise for kurtosis, if the value of the coefficient of kurtosis is exactly equals to zero, we say the data is mesocurtic. But for the negative value, it is leptocurt, it is platycurtic. And for the positive values, it is leptocurtic. So in this case, it is positively skew and platycurtic distribution, which is strong evidence that it's very likely that distribution won't be normal. But normal quantile quantile plot tells us a slightly different story. So descriptive methods can contradict to each other. That's why we most of the time we rely on the inferential method. And in inferential statistical methods, we state our null hypothesis. Here our null hypothesis states that the sample comes from the population that follows a normal probability distribution against the alternative, that the sample comes from the population that does not follow the normal probability distribution with level of significance 5%, that is 0.05. Using Shapiro-Wilkes test as a test statistic, and the decision rule that we reject H0 if p value is less than or equals to alpha, that is 0 0.05. We can look at the p value, that is the significance value. And in this case, the significance value is 0 0.384. Hence, the p value is not less than or equals to alpha, which is against our decision rule. Hence, we can conclude that, that we may not be able to reject the null hypothesis. And it's likely to be true. Hence, our application conclusion states that, that since the p-value is not less than equals to 0 0.05, hence we may not reject H0 and conclude that the distribution is normal. Hence, using this inferential statistical method, we can say that the normality assumption holds true. Though this contradicts other descriptive statistical methods, but it's generally observed that the inferential statistic results are counted to be relatively superior to the descriptive statistical results. And moreover, a normality assumption states that the data comes from the population that follows the normal distribution. So all the descriptive statistical measure only talked about what's the distribution of the sample. But the test for normality that's conducted through Shapiro-Wilkes test gives us that whether the population follows a normal distribution or not. And in this case, Yes, the population does follow the normal distribution. Hence, we can conclude that the normality assumption holds true. Thank you.